What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and it's time for the first playoff match in the Indigo League of Legends. Actually our first playoff match for the Venus Venusaur is actually up against the same team that we fought in round one. The Minnesota Munchlax is coached by Isaiah, one of the creators of the league, so definitely go check out his channel. His link will be in the description. And if you didn't see the first battle, it'll be in the same playlist as this video. Now in the first battle, uh, he made actually a couple of misplays with a pretty powerful team, but he it definitely seemed like he learned from those misplays uh, in the team that he brought this time. He also has quite a few different Pokemon for his team overall, with access to Garchomp, Lopunny, Umbreon, Florges, Cloyster, Electros, Aegislash, Conkledur, Seismitoad, Rotom Cutform, Bonnet, and Escavalier. I really had my work cut out in figuring out which Pokemon he was going to bring to our matchup. Now, Caesar did so well against his team last time, the things that Caesar did well against haven't really changed. I really wanted to at least have it there for a floor just check and kind of a secondary check to something like Cloyster that if it's trying to set up, I can just punch it in the face. Um, I did put on Caesar Knock Off, and this time it's Life Orb instead of Choice Band like last time. Uh, I decided to go with Mega Blaziken because of Blaziken's fantastic neutral coverage against his whole team, and it was a nice secondary check to the Aegis Slash with Fire Blast. Uh, of course, this is Buckbeak, so it has Hidden Power Ice Hit Garchomp as well. Um, Drapion is Kali, the kind of defensive pivot one that also carries Toxic Spikes with a little bit of speed just to make sure it can outrun Rotom forms that don't have Choice Scarf and also a little bit of uh, attack just where those AVs were left over residually. Uh, I also have Swellow here because once again, good neutral coverage, but I did need to make sure I took care of Aegislash before I used Swellow. And Latios is Fortune the Latios, and he has Shadow Ball just for Aegislash, because I knew with a little bit of HP and defense EVs, I could not be taken out by a plus two weakness policy um, Shadow Sneak. And I actually decided to bring Whimsicott because of outside of a Scavalier and um, his Aegislash, he actually didn't have a lot of good ways to hit it. And uh, it was just a good overall defensive thing that I could use to paralyze some things too. Uh, he decided to lead off with the Electros, and I figured he would just Volt Switch, but he does show hidden power right off on the first turn, so that tells me it's going to be super effective against Blaziken, unless he was predicting a switch. Uh, Latios outside of Super Fang or Knock Off Electros is a good switch in all around, uh, so I just go into that, and it shows that he is using hidden power ground as it is not affecting Latios. Uh, unfortunately, I missed Draco Meteor on Cloyster, which is huge. It could have one hit KO'd being a Life Orb attack. Um, but he decides to double switch as I bring in Caesar, expecting him to set up. Uh, he goes out into his Law Punny and surprises me with Focus Ash, and I was wincing because I was like, oh man, does he have counter? But no, it's actually an Agility Baton Pass set. Uh, he might have expected me to try to set up or switch out right there as he goes for Protect on this next turn. I don't really have any reason to just switch or to go for another move, so I'm just going to keep on bullet punching to keep pressure on him. Uh, he does go on the Aegis Slash, which takes a little bit more damage than I expected from Bullet Punch. Um, I, I just wanted to keep him honest there. I didn't want to go for a knockoff and then afford him to us free switch into something else. Um, but since he does go out into Aegis Slash, I figure the Shadow Ball or the Flash Cannon is incoming, and um, Drapion can easily take those hits. He surprises me with Hidden Power of Fire, so I'm very happy that I didn't stay in there because Knockoff would have failed to one-hit KO him. And in the meantime, Hidden Power off of Aegislash's uh, Blade Form's high special attack would have definitely KO'd uh, my Caesar. Um, here he goes for King Shield. I figured he'd do that, so I just went for Taunt to stop him from King Shielding. And if he wants to go for Sword Stance or anything weird like that in case he only had um, Shadow Ball or Flash Cannon as coverage. Uh, I did want to get up Toxic Spikes. Toxic Spikes hit several of the Pokemon that he brought that week, and it broke any other possible Sashes or... Um, it also negated recovery options that he might have. We see just how little damage Iron Head does there. I'm very proud with how well um, Drapion took that attack. I went for knockoff on the switch here because I knew he couldn't stay in and go for King Shield because he was taunted. And anything on his team would I would appreciate removing the item from really. Uh, and so I'm able to get rid of Assault Vest on the Electros, which is very nice. I go out into Whimsicott here, last time I went out into Latios, I generally don't want to do the same thing necessarily, um, and just in case he had Flamethrower or something, I'd go for Encore, forcing him to go for Giga Drain one more time. And this is great because if he stays in, 
I get a free moon blast off in his face. And if he switches out, I can hopefully use Stun Spore to paralyze something on his team. Uh, he does decide to go out into his Cloister, which I thought was a pretty interesting move. He might have expected me to switch out right there. Um, but since he does go out into Cloister, unless Cloister is choice scarfed, it's not going to outspeed Whimsicott, even though I barely have any speed investment on this defensive Whimsicott. Actually, I don't think I have any speed investment on this defensive Whimsicott. Uh, and so Giga Drain should be able to KO him from that range after the toxic damage, or the poison damage, excuse me. Uh, so Cloister goes down without actually doing anything, which I was very happy to see. Now he brings in Law Punny here, and I was a little bit confused by that, maybe he just wanted some extra chip damage. If it were a max speed invested Law Punny, it would have definitely done something to Whimsicott, but since he looks like he's running a more bulky one in the pass around things with Baton Pass, he doesn't get the luxury of doing that. Now he goes out into his Aegis last year just to go for Flash Cannon or Iron Head. I do paralyze him and get the full paralysis with Stun Spore. Um, I just stayed in a win for Moonblast, trying to get the, the drop from the uh, Moonblast to lower his special attack. Uh, it looks like he's going for Hidden Power of Fire instead of going for Iron Head. And Iron Head being a stab type attack would have been a lot better. So I'm guessing he was expecting me to switch out into Caesar there because the Iron Head was such an obvious attack right there. Now as he goes out into Florges, I just went for Encore again, trying to lock him into Hidden Power Fire because that would give Latios, Drapion, uh, it would just give them multiple opportunities for a free switch in instead of having to eat an Iron Head or a Shadow Ball or anything like that. Now here I definitely expected him to go for uh, Aromatherapy. He had a Paralyzed Aegis Slash and a couple of Poison Pokemon. Um, I definitely thought Aromatherapy was in the cards, but he just goes straight for Moonblast and since it one hit KOs Swellow, uh, that means it's probably an Offensive Florges. And since it is an Offensive Florges, I figured I could actually KO it with Drapion but he barely lives, which means he might have some bulk invested. Uh, and he's able to take out Drapion, which is super unfortunate. That was a really nice check to Aegis Slash. Um, I really wish Drapion could get Gunk Shot. I'm not really sure why it can't. Of course, the next best option is um, Cross Poison with the high critical hit chance, but it does have a lower base uh, damage. I go out into Blaziken after Drapion goes down because I know from that range, Hidden Power Ice will KO. And if he switches into uh, Garchomp trying to take the fire type attack. Empire Ice will definitely clean him out right there. Um, just in case he's running Yachi Chomp or some type of um, weird Scarf variant, I did not want to stay in here because he could take the Hidden Power Ice and retaliate. Uh, so I switch out into Whimsicott and he surprises me bringing Mega Garchomp once again. He brought it in our first match. And even a resisted Earthquake looks like it's a 2 hit KO from this range, which I was pretty surprised at. Uh, since he did Mega Evolve, he does lose a decent amount of speed, but he is clearly a max speed Mega Garchomp because he is still able to outspeed my defensive Whimsicott. Um, I could have just gone for Encore right there, but I just stayed in and went for uh, Moonblast, expecting him to switch out into something else. Now, since he is missing enough HP for Hidden Power Ice to definitely KO, that's going to be our play. So once again, Mega versus Mega, my Mega happens to come out on top there versus the Mega Garchomp. Uh, I don't, I'm not confident in my Blaziken's ability to one hit KO Electros, even without the Assault Vest, my best move to hit it is High Jump Kick. And depending on his investment, plus I might miss, I really wanted to make sure I kept around uh, my Blaziken for this um, annoying Aegis Slash. This Aegis Slash, now the best thing I have to hit it with is Shadow Ball. And after a Shadow Ball, Fire Blast will definitely KO, but I was um, I was worried about missing it, and I just really wanted to keep him honest with the music he was going for. Um, so Shadow Ball does a fantastic amount of damage for him being in shield form, and unfortunately he's able to go for his own Shadow Ball and KO Latios in a single hit. Uh, that is unfortunate, and I was I put Life Orb on Latios. Maybe I should have gotten Choice Specs just for a little bit of extra damage there. Um, here. He is just going to stance change back into shield form because if I miss the fire blast, then that gives him another opportunity to attack. Uh, plus, I only have eight fire blast uses, so if I start missing them and he king shields them, then we're in a weird situation where I ran out of fire blast PP. Fortunately, though, I hit fire blast, which is fantastic. That's going to be enough to easily finish off Aegis Slash, and that means his last Pokemon is his um, Electros. And at that range, it can't take 
a high jump kick. I really underestimated um, the attack potential on Mega Blade Blaziken. So the first playoff match is a victory, and that was a lot closer than the first match I had against the Minnesota Munchlax, because that was actually pretty scary near the end there against the Aegislash. Because had I missed Fire Blast and then he attacked, things might have gone differently. So, But that's the game of Pokemon, and I hope you guys enjoyed this battle. I will hopefully be uploading the next match of the playoffs here, depending on who wins, on the other side of the bracket. And look forward to that. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.